Um, and what we're going to start with is probably the very beginning of uh, weldments, actually. We're going to begin with our weldments here. And that is going to be three-dimensional sketching. I know that uh, a lot of people, when they hear about three-dimensional sketching, start to get that little nervous feeling in their chest, and that's, that, that's common. Um, three-dimensional sketching can be a little bit difficult, um, but it is necessary a lot of times when you're dealing with weldments or structural members in SOLIDWORKS. Um, so what we actually do here is on our sketch tab, um, just hit the drop down, pick 3D sketch, um, and I find that working in an isometric view, so making sure that your triad down here is in that isometric view there, um, is the best place to start. All right. So once we are in a three-dimensional sketch, what you want to do is just grab your line tool, um, and you see out here on the screen, it actually gives us our triad, or the two red arrows here showing you which plane I'm actually sketching on. Also, on your mouse, it will show you which plane, again, you are sketching on. Now, the reason I say that we want to be in um, a three-dimensional view, whether it's isometric or any other three-dimensional view that you prefer, um, is because you're actually not allowed to change planes in SOLIDWORKS unless you're in that 3D view. So by pressing Tab, notice that I go to my YZ plane and the red arrows change direction. Hitting Tab again shows me my ZX or my top plane, and again, we can see that the arrows right there change direction. So being in that three-dimensional view is going to make it extremely easy for us to not only sketch in this three-dimensional space, but also to be able to tell which plane we're actually sketching on at any given time. So what I'm going to do is begin by just simply drawing a line up like this. And what we're going to do is just draw, our, draw out our, uh, our weldment frame. Now in order to come towards me, I'm going to uh, you know, switch my plane draw out a couple lines, and really what we're doing here is just creating a concept design. It doesn't need to be uh, you know, exactly what you're looking for. That's okay. Um, and I'll just go ahead and close these off like that. So again, it does not have to be too crazy. Um, however, if you rotate this around, notice that by being in that three-dimensional view and knowing which plane we're sketching on, we know that we are in fact dealing with a 2D sketch in 3D space. I know that sounds a little confusing, but work with me here. Um, now, the relationships are a little bit different when we're dealing with sketching in 3D space with this 3D sketch. If I pick this line right here, notice that instead of having horizontal, vertical, coincidence, uh, we actually have a long X, a long Y, and a long Z. Again, the nice thing about being on that specific plane in that 3D view is that typically it will tell us which plane is the most likely uh, choice. So if I pick a long Z, you can see that now it actually moves along that z-axis. One of the other big relationships that's going to help you out a ton in this is um, equal and parallel relationships. Having equal and parallel is really going to save you as far as knowing that your lines are exactly the same size and same shape. So I'm picking those two arcs. Again, I'll make those equal. And then lastly, just make sure that we define we are dealing with tangent lines. Um, so with that, we should have an almost completely defined sketch. One last thing I'll do since we are dealing with weldment profiles here is I will just connect these two points to get that last sketch line in there. And finally, we'll just use our smart dimension tool. So we'll throw in a dimension of 600 to define that height. Uh, our length overall is also going to be a 600. I'm going to define the length of this line as 300. And lastly, we'll just do a height from here to here. No, we won't. I was just kidding. Um, let's go ahead and define. Well, we could either do a radius or a height there. That would be my guess. Uh, let's go ahead and just leave that under defined. Um, so once we have that shape in there, or once we've defined you know, exactly the, the size that we're looking for, we're going to need to go off this plane a little bit. So we're going to need to define where the other side of my sketch profile is or where my 3D profile is going to be. So I'll just grab my line tool. And again, we need to hit our tab to define that we're going in another direction. So now if I take this line and extend it out, we've just come out perpendicular to our sketch. And really that's all that you need to do to define uh, a 3D sketch. So let's go ahead and just finish up this profile. I'm going to be drawing the exact same thing, so just making sure that I'm on the right plane and I'm drawing the shapes the way that they need to be thrown in there. Go ahead and just close that up. 
Um, one of the other big things, like I said, as far as adding relationships goes, we want to make sure that everything is either parallel or on a specific plane. Um, if we wanted to, you could actually take a line and a plane and generate a relationship. So if I wanted this to be on that front plane, you just select the two and say on plane. And that's going to make things much easier for us to just define a little bit later down the road. That way we know that everything is the same size, the same shape, parallel, equal, even, everything like that. Um, for the most part, when we're dealing with this, what I like to do is just, um, you know, pick any radius or any arc that's going to be the same size. Again, make those equal. We'll deal with that in a little bit again. Uh, again, picking multiple lines, making those equal as well. Um, and then making sure that you have your tangents in there. So I'll go ahead and pick my tangent. Same thing right here to find that we have these as a tangent. And lastly, let me go ahead and hit OK on there. Let's undo. What we'll also learn about, now that I'm uh, kind of poking around with this and seeing that that's not working out the best for me, we can go ahead and learn how to use the mirror as well. So let me go ahead and clear that out. Um, and one last thing here, again, we'll just connect that. Draw another line out here. We'll just mark to mention that. So we use our smart dimension tool to define how long that line is going to be. Let's go ahead and make that uh, 400. Grab my other line tool up here. We'll pull a couple more out and just make those the same length. So I'll put a line right there. Put a line right here. And then do the same thing over here. Now, these should all be the same length, the same size, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to select all these lines, and again, we're going to make those all along the X. And then lastly, we want to make those equal as well. So by making those equal, this should be fully defined. Except for this guy, which needs a dimension off the top edge there, which is going to be from this point to that line, and we'll make that 300. And there we have it. So, this is a 3D sketch profile inside of SOLIDWORKS. Um, once you have that taken care of, we will, yeah, we'll be doing the mirror here in a second. Um, so once we have that taken care of, what I would actually do is just create, um, start creating the weldments. And again, we can just mirror that over later on. So your weldments are found on your um, weldments tab inside of SOLIDWORKS. If you do not have the weldments tab turned on, you can simply right click and just hit the checkbox for weldments. It's on a default list right there. Um, and all we have to do is just click structural member and start to define our sizes. All right. So weldments, we pick our standard ANSI inch or ISO. I'm going to go with an ISO for now. And then depending on which standard you pick, you're going to have different default sizes. So I'll go ahead and choose square tube, but notice that we do have things like angle iron, C channel, we have pipe, we have rectangular tube, all of that built right into the software. So again, with square tube selected, we can again pick our size. Notice all the default sizes that we have there. Again, all of these can be uh, added upon. We do have other um, standards that can be uh, found on 3D Content Central. Simply drag and drop into the software. But once you grab your sizes, all you have to do is just pick a size and then again define which parts of the, uh, the model you want to be part of that structural member. So notice that when I pick those, it's now giving me a preview of what this is going to look like. Down at the bottom here, one of the other things that I'd like to show you just with these groups is that if you pick the little pink dot that shows up there, we actually have the ability to define the corner treatment. So notice here we have the ability to do an end miter. We can see our preview automatically update there. Or you can define one of the two end butts that we have right here. So once we have that taken care of, you just hit the green check on there. And then again, we can do the same thing over here. Now, if you didn't want to go to every single pink dot and do that, we also have the ability in our settings to define right here that we want everything to just default to an end miter. So we do have the ability to make those global changes, or what we could do is go through and pick the end condition or the corner treatment for each corner individually. Um, now once we have that taken care of, 
what we have to do here is just click New Group. And by clicking New Group, what we're doing is defining another set or another member that we're going to add. So I can click on this beam right here, and notice that it automatically adds it and just fits it right inside of our model. One of the other interesting things that we uh, have the ability to do here is once I have all of these taken care of, or once I, I guess once I have that set, um, what you can actually do is pick your line segment or pick your group. Let me go ahead and pick my group right there. Um, and notice we can do a mirror profile. All right, so if I wanted to, I could actually mirror this about a plane or a face. Uh, we don't really need to do that right here, so I'm going to go ahead and mirror that a little bit later on. Um, I'll actually use the mirror tool for that. So let's go ahead and just say new group. Maybe pick that beam right there. And then add another new group and just make it these three beams. So that's just to show you we can separate this, break this however we want that to be. And then once we hit the green check on there, what it does is it automatically creates all of those structural members. Now, um, if we do want to mirror that across to the other side, all we have to do is come to our features and do a mirror. Um, and then just pick a face or a plane that we want to mirror across. So let's go ahead and just pick maybe this face right here. And then choose the bodies that we want to mirror. So we can go ahead and pick all of our individual bodies like this. Um, and what we also want to do is say that we want to merge our solids. And the reason for that is because we want these members across the middle here to be a single member. Now, if it doesn't want to do that, that's okay. We can go ahead and cut that out and hit okay. So we can see that we can to get those bodies to go across there. Um, the other thing that you may want to do or the other thing that you can do is instead of having those structural members come across the middle, um, we could actually change our sketch profile. So let me go ahead and say, um, our sketch there. Oops. Change this to 800. So we can remove those basically from that mirror. So let me go ahead and hit OK on there. Now it is going to do something very similar to this. However, the other option that we can do or the other thing that we can do is take our front plane or take our right plane and just generate a plane right through the middle of the model. So if I go to my reference geometry plane, we can just offset a plane 400 millimeters and use that for our mirror. So let me go ahead and put that out there. Edit our mirror and use our new plane for that. Now the mirror will have to come down underneath that plane, so let me go ahead and do that really quick. So I'll go mirror. Looks like we're having a, my internet just dropped out there for a second. So hold on tight really quick. I'm sure you guys will see this back in a second. Like the router that I was connected to is just completely off the network. Are you having? This happens uh, every once in a while. This happens every once in a while. Yeah. Okay. All right. right. You're back on now. Am I? Yep. Yeah, love that kid though. Yep, yep. All right. All right. Let me go ahead and share my screen one more time for you guys. There we go. So we're back in here. I'm going to go ahead and pick my, again, my mirror face or plane, and then just choose the bodies that we want to mirror over the other side like that. And there we have it. Okay. So, um, once we have that taken care of, we do have our structural member frames. And using the mirror command, we do have the ability to mirror those bodies across to the other side. Um, if we take a look at our cut list, this is one of the big things that we have as far as weldments are concerned, and this is one of the big reasons that we have the weldments in the part files for that cut list. Um, at any time when we're modeling or creating our structural members, what we have the ability to do is right click on here and go down to our option and say update. And then when we do update, what it actually does is it takes all of those cut list items that would be of an equal size 
and sorts them into different items. Notice right here we have this structural member, this structural member, um, and then we have all the four beams that come across to connect it. And then lastly, we have the two beams across the middle. So what it does is it breaks those components apart into different structural members for our cut list. What we also have the ability to do here um, is form sub-weldment. So if we wanted um, maybe one of these items right here, our structural number one, and then this item that comes along with it right there, we can right-click and say create sub-weldment. And what that does is it actually forms a new cut list item like that. Now again, we may want to do the same thing over at the other side. So what we would do is again find that cut list item right here, grab this guy right here, right click and create a sub weldment for those. So notice it's very quick, very easy for us to sort out those sub weldments and sort out those weldments um, into just unique identifiers. One of the other things that we were going to talk about today is the fact that if we were to take these sub weldments like this cut list item right here or any bodies underneath that cut list item, um, you can right click on them, go to your properties and actually change the physical properties for each of these cut list items individually. So this is something that's actually relatively new to SolidWorks and it's really cool because we have the ability to pick any cut list item that we choose over here. And then inside of each of those cut list items, notice that it gives us a length, it gives us angle information, it gives us the call out for that guy, um, and then also any material that would be applied to any of those cut list items. So this is going to be a really quick, really easy way for you to define different materials and different properties for different items in your cut list. Um, also, we do have the ability over here, um, you know, again, to define material based on the body. So if we were to take any of these structural members, like these four that we have right here, we can right click on those and notice just change the material right from that right click menu. So again, making it really fast, really easy for us to de define what's going on with each of those bodies. We are automatically creating our cut list. We are able to go through and manually sort that in any way that we choose. Um, what I'd like to do next is just show you one other really cool feature inside of our uh, weldments, and that's going to be the ability to add our gussets. So if you want to add a gusset, maybe down here at the bottom corner, um, all we have to do is click on the gusset command, and what it does is asks us for specific su supporting faces. So if I pick this face right here and this face right here, notice that I automatically start to get this preview that identifies where that gusset is going to be located in space. So if I wanted it to be right there, again, all I have to do is just key in some information about the thickness and the distances offset from the inside corner. Or what we can do is define where this is actually going to be located in space. So we can define whether it's going to be above or below, in the center of, um, and or underneath, wherever this guy is going to be located. So what I'll do is go ahead and just set some of my dimensions, maybe bump this up to 35. And notice that my preview is again automatically updating right there, just like it would for any other extrude that we create in SolidWorks. So we have our 35 right there. Um, we can obviously create a gusset, go ahead and hit OK on that, and notice that it automatically places it out there. You'll also see that it automatically adds this to my cut list, and if I right click and again just tell it to update, it creates a new cut list folder for any gusset that I were to create. So again, if I wanted to mirror that over to the other side using my mirror commands, um, I'll use that same plane that we've been using and my body to mirror, we'll go ahead and just choose that gusset. So it mirrors over to the other side. I'll hit OK on there. Update my cut list again, and notice that it moves that gusset from the, uh, the top level of my cut list into that gusset folder. Um, these folders can also be renamed, so if you just do that slow double click, we always have the ability to just change the name of each of these cut list items. And that's just going to make it faster and easier for us to identify what's inside of each one of those folders. So, so now that we have our structural members set up, uh, we've identified where we are able to go in and do these properties or manage the properties. And again, the way that you do that is finding that cut list item, right clicking on it, and going to properties. Once you are inside the properties, again, just to reiterate, 
we have the ability to expand any folders that we've been working with. Mm -hmm. And then also select any of these cut list items and just make a simple modification to add a property to it. So now that we have that taken care of, what I'd like to do is just add a little bit of sheet metal to this. Now these two do typically go hand in hand as far as I've seen. When you're using sheet metal, a lot of times you will have some sort of weldment structure in there. Um, if not, you can use them separately, that's not a problem. But the nice thing is, is that now we're actually able to add those sheet metal profiles to our cut list. So let's go ahead and identify how to do that. Since we are in a part, all we have to do is just pick a face and start a sketch on it to define where our profile is going to be. For this, what I'll do is just use a corner rectangle. And what's nice about using the corner rectangle since we're in a part file is that we can automatically create these references to these profiles um, that basically defines exactly how this piece is going to fit into place. So as I change the model, the sheet metal is automatically updating its size. 